Hi everyone, I'm Professor Bennett. I teach in the Communications and Media Studies Department here at Santa Ana College. I also advise the student media outlet El Don News. I'm here to talk to you today about the infodemic. What is it and why is it happening right now? But first let's start with a question that came up in my TikTok feed recently. Does the COVID-19 vaccine magnet challenge work? Maybe you saw some of these uh, posts that were shared on lots of different social media accounts and went viral saying that people who claim to have gotten the vaccine were now able to stick magnet, magnetic stuff to their arms. Other images and videos claiming that there's sensors and magnets and microchips in the vaccine, claiming that the vaccine is unsafe and might kill you. But what about the other universe of information that debunks these claims that says that there that there is no evidence that the vaccine is harmful for fertility or, that, or has any ma microchips or magnetic devices inside of it. How do we reconcile these two alternate universes of information? If you're confused and you don't know what to believe or who to trust, you're not alone. The World Health Organization has said that we are living through an infodemic. An infodemic is too much information, including false or misleading information in digital and physical environments during a disease outbreak. This means that there's so much information out there that we can't tell what's harmful, what's helpful, what's true, and what's false. This has gotten so bad since the coronavirus pandemic that the U.S. Surgeon General in the summer of 2021 called COVID-19 misinformation an urgent threat and is saying that misinformation kills. I would argue that the infodemic is not only a product of the coronavirus pandemic. In 2016, after the election, uh, Pew Research Center did a, did a survey and 88% of Americans said that fake news, including misinformation and disinformation, has left Americans confused about basic facts. And subsequent studies in the years after have proven this to be true. Everyone from teenagers all the way up to older adults really struggle to find a fake headline and to not believe that something that is untrue is true. So why is this happening? How come 84% of people think that a fake headline is real? Why is it so hard for us to discern when we have so much information coming at us? It's not your fault. We're at a really in interesting intersection of mass media history and human biology, how we've evolved to consume information from the world around us. So it's important to know that information overload isn't a new thing. The infodemic is new, but every new mass medium has democratized information and ideas, made it more accessible, created more of it, and allowed people to produce it. So all the way from the stone tablet uh, to the book to the digital tablets that we have today, uh, humans just need media literacy in order to know how to navigate this. So with, an, with more information, with less gatekeepers, comes more information without anyone to edit it or to tell you how to consume it or the context behind it. I love this quote from 1612 because it feels so relevant today. Lope de Vega is a, um, a Spanish playwright and he said, so many books, so much confusion, an ocean all around us, an ocean of print, and most of it covered in froth. So if that sounds familiar, we are not alone. Uh, in the 1600s, there were too many books for us to even uh, understand, how to, for us to even be able to sift through. But there is a difference today um, that technology has made it more quick, uh, more efficient to send information rapidly. So information that might be incorrect can spread faster. Um, and today's current media landscape, yes, has a combination of, uh, of technology, technological advances that make creating, duplicating, sharing online very, very simple. And because of that, we just have huge, huge volumes of new information constantly being created. We don't have to wait for the book to get printed anymore. We can just hit send on a tweet. Right. And with this comes pressure to create and to compete, especially as these realms are monetized. This sometimes can lead to a quantity over quality effect. This exponential increase of channels with which to send and receive information. It's not only books. It's not only oral and spoken word anymore. We have every look at your apps on your phone and how many different platforms and ways that you use to communicate. Um, this increasing weight of historical data available. There's so much more from the past that we are experiencing and learning about now 
along with the present. So there's a lot of information out there high volumes of conflicting and contradictory inaccurate information and we don't have any simple methodologies for quickly processing comparing and evaluating information sources hopefully this workshop will help you come up with some so that you can be more media literate so how much information is too much how much are we consuming every day and is that a problem well, 174 newspapers worth of information is how much Americans consume every day. This is five times as much as it was in 1986. Uh, that includes, there's about 500 minutes of new video uploaded to YouTube every second. That's about eight hours of footage every second. More information, visual information than we could ever possibly consume. And we are on our phones more than ever. During quarantine, uh, our, our, our average personal screen time went up by a third to 10 hours a day. That's not including school and that's not including work. And if you're a member of the Gen Z population, the 10 hours screen time was already there. So yours probably went up even more during quarantine. So 10 hours on your screen where you're consuming information, that's a lot, especially when our brain's capacity, our conscious capacity for processing is only 120 bits of information at a time. So to put that in comparison, talking to one person takes about half of that, about 50 to 60 bits uh, of processing capacity. So if you're talking to two people, there goes all of your processing capacity. If you have your phone out or other tabs or you're just listening to this while you're also watching TV, you're overstepping your capacity. And what happens when, our, when the capacity gets overloaded? Our productivity goes down. There's a lot that's at risk when we overload our processing capacity with too much information. This has been proven in time and time again over the last 30, 40 years uh, that even though we think we can multitask, we cannot. We, it's the illusion of multitasking. All that we're doing is splitting that 120 bits into smaller and smaller pieces. So we might only be giving a third of that to, if we're doing three things, you only give one third of that. You're not giving the 120%, let's say. Um, and I love this quote from Bertrand Gross who coined the term information overload in the 19th 1960s. He says that information overload occurs when the amount of input to a system exceeds its processing capacity. So this means that decision makers have a fairly limited cognitive processing capacity. And this is a problem for humans because we are limited to that 120 bits. And yet our biology wants us to consume as much information and knowledge as possible. We want to know as much as we can about the world and information is our way to do that. So it totally makes sense that you would want to consume as much information as possible possible and feel like you you don't know yet with all of that information feeling like you don't know what to believe or you're unable to make sense of it all this is because when you overload your system your memory your focus uh, goes out the window it's very very hard for your short and long-term memory processing to be present when your system is overloaded your focus goes away uh, they say on average when you're when you get distracted on by something it takes about 20 minutes for you to find your focus again on it the more often we switch tasks the more often we consume various information the less productive we are and what this all results in is that we fall back on our cognitive biases we fall back on our really simple shortcuts that we take to per to perceive information we absorb it we're not critically thinking about it when there's too much of it coming at us at all times on the next page, you'll be asked to assess your information diet. This is the first step in combating the infodemic, to understand what types of information you're consuming and how much of it you're consuming. Because when your system gets overloaded, when you just allow your phones and your screens to send you as much information as it wants to send you, and you don't, you don't pay attention to how much your cognitive capacity is being overloaded, then you fall, you, that's the first step to falling susceptible to misinformation, falsehoods, and disinformation. So it's important that you understand why the infodemic is happening right now because of mass media history and technology, technological advances that have made messages being shared instantaneous and the combination of human capacity and human biology and our, our need to consume information. So it's not your fault if you're confused at all. I hope that this le um, lecture video has helped explain some things for you. If you enjoyed this lecture and you would like to learn more about how mass media and society impact you, 
Take, consider taking some of our general education courses here at Santa Ana College. We also have a journalism program, and you're welcome to join student media with no prerequisites required. Feel free to email me. My email address is right here at the bottom. And you can find us at Eldon News on Instagram and on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and good luck navigating that infodemic. Bye.